We're making beer. That's really all Here's that matters. Here's to that. <laughs> I'm just going to. Yep. <laughs> got our four kegs distance. That's so. right, that's right. Four kegs of separation. Hey, Joe here with my friend Emmett from Claw Hammer Supply Company. We're outside of the kitchen and tap. Just to give you a little bit of background of what we're doing today and why we're here, a couple of weeks ago, they invited me to come out to their really awesome uh, studio and brew a beer. We brewed one batch of beer with the same malt bill, the same hot bill, the same water profile, different yeast strains, four different yeast strains. You look, quite, you look kind of scientific. You know? uh, so I look as smart as uh, Farnsworth. Farnsworth, he's from Futurama. If there's if there's ever a, a Mount Rushmore of science, I'm on it. Yeah, you you got you got your Farnsworth, you got your Doc Doc got Tesla, Doc Emmett Brown yeah. from Back to the Future. You have uh, yeah. Nikola Tesla. Right. We're and, pretty much in the same category. And Emmett. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I probably started homebrewing in what 2002 or three. I'm guessing. I mean, there's definitely yeast selection, but it's not like it is today. You just go to a homebrew store and, you know, you'd pick one of the few yeasts that, that they had. Basically, just we just did a, a smash, single malt, single hop. And then, uh, so we did, it was just Maris Otter mm -hmm. as the base, as the only malt, but yep. our base malt. And then Zula as the hop, which I hadn't used before. So I wanted to kind of yep. check out the Zula hop while we were doing this. And then we pitched four of the White Labs yeast. And this was, I think these were all fermented just at room temperature 70, 72, so. Yeah, so a lot of you guys know that we, this is something that we do regularly here in our kitchen and tap and our tasting room out in San Diego and in our canned beers that we just started to do from our brewing company, White Labs Brewing Company. So here we are a couple weeks later after the beers have all been fermented out. We actually got some samples of all the different beers and we sent them off to San Diego to our analytical lab and we got some analytical data here to share, which is nice. really, really cool. Um, so the four different strains that we used for our brew day were WLP001, California Ale Yeast yep. was our this, first one. This is the one I'm most familiar with. Yep. Yeah, very versatile, lots of different styles. Very clean. Super which clean. Which is what you'd expect from, from, from the, that yeast uh, strain, yeah, yeah. California Ale. Yeah, for sure. So then our second strain that we pitched was our WLP 066, which is our London Fog ale yeast. And it's really great for making uh, nice hazy, hazy beers. Uh, so our third yeast that we pitched uh, was the WLP 518, our Opshog Kvayak ale yeast. And that was really interesting that we wanted to see how that would go because this can ferment, this strain can ferment at pretty high temperatures pretty quickly, relatively quickly, or not relatively quickly, very quickly. Very <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was really interesting to see like, hey, what is this yeast gonna do? It was used to make a lot of these beer styles called horn doll beer styles. So a lot of people who make it using raw beers or using these Kvayak ale strains. It's just a really interesting kind of farmhouse uh, beer style in Norway. The last one that we uh, pitched was our WLP 644, Saccharomyces bruxtois. We call it Sac bruxtois for short. It's a long name. You can use this strain for a wide variety of beers. A lot of people use it for IPA. Th this might be my new favorite. <laughs> this one here. <laughs> yeah. These guys are definitely more kind of like tropically, a little, little softer too. Mm. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. All of these beers, all four of these beers are delightful and delicious. The mouthfeel and... on these two is quite a bit different, uh -huh. especially from this one. I think I feel this is super more. dry. Yeah, this is dry. So that kind of leads us to our analytical data. So we did a whole panel of all kinds of different 
um, testing on for these four beers. And so the biggest one that I really was you know, interested in learning about was the different ABV. What are these yeast strains gonna to do to the alcohol by volume? So we know that the 001, this comes in at 6.92% ABV. And the second one, the 066, this clocks in at 6.6. .6. So a little, little lower ABV. The third beer, the 518, clocks in at 6.52, so a little lower. A little more mouthfeel on that guy. A more mouthfeel, 6.51 okay. on this one. So we are seeing with the WLP001, the California Ale Yeast, that this one really boosts the ABV. Just chewed through. That so right that there. would make me think that attenuation plays a part of that and would have something to say about that, right? Kind of gives us that understanding of why we're getting that alcohol by volume, I think. And also that mouthfeel, what's dry and what's more residual sweetness there. Right. So here is our 001 again, and our apparent attenuation you'll see comes in at 86.19%. It attenuated yeah. pr pretty well. It did its job. It did sure. its job. Yeah. yeah, it converted that sugar into alcohol and dried it out pretty well. Um, our second beer here, our 066, this one, the apparent attenuation came in at 83.56. Our 518, 82% attenuation. So we're kind of getting lower and lower here. And then our last one, again, 82. And, and that's totally apparent, like these two, a yeah. little bit less attenuation, but man, that mouthfeel, yeah. it's kind of almost, like it's like a beer. different beer. Yeah, I know. I think this is probably my favorite. I, I tell you, I am like vacillating between the two of these. And I like both the, of these. Um, <laughs> Zero six six, the, the London, London fog. fog. Okay, yeah. I just like the six forty four though. It's just something. It's very nice. It. Something about it. And you know, this analytical uh, data is something that is available to really anybody. If you if you're a mead maker or a cider maker, kombucha maker. Do you want to figure out um, not just like if there's something wrong, but if you're having maybe a test pilot system and right. you want to make sure that you're getting your, you know, your small batch beers to a place that you really want right. before you start sending them to your 30 barrel brew house. Or it's really, I think it's pretty yeah. smart to send us some samples and we can give you some analytical data and then you could tweak your recipes or tweak your processes. You know, we have a lot of really passionate home brewers. You know, that is the basis of our company is home brewing. We started out as home brewers. So um, if you're a home brewer out there, I'd love to hear like, what kind of experiments have you done? Have you done any split batching? Have you done any tweaking of your processes or working with different yeast? You know, what kind of home brewer are you? Comment below. I'd love to hear about yeah. like, you know, what you guys think about all this. Absolutely. Well, until next time, guys. Cheers.